When I was growing up, teachers would say, reading is fundamental. Now that I'm older, I have to face the sad reality that reading is Islamophobic. Politicians, the media, and Islam's westernized Muslim apologists assure me that Islam is a religion of peace and tolerance. There's only one thing that keeps me from believing this claim. I can read. For instance, I open the Quran and I read Surah 9, verse 29, which commands Muslims to fight those who do not believe in Allah. Literate fool that I am, I conclude that when the Quran says, fight those who do not believe in Allah, it means fight those who do not believe in Allah. That's when my Muslim friends tell me that I'm reading the verse out of context. So I read the verses that come before it and the verses that come after it. I read the rest of the chapter over and over. I read the entire disorganized book from the beginning, which isn't really the beginning, to the end, which isn't really the end. I read the relevant hadith and the related sirah and the classical commentaries. And when all my reading is done, I realize that Surah 929 in context means exactly what it says. But as soon as I say that, people call me an Islamophobe and a racist and a bigot and hate monger. Something similar happens when I read Surah 4, verse 34, which tells Muslim men that they can beat their wives into submission. I quote the verse to people, people cry context, I read the context, context shows that the verse means exactly what it says, people call me an Islamophobe. I read Surah 98, verse 6, which calls Christians and Jews the worst of creatures. I quote the verse to people, people cry context, I read the context, context shows the verse means exactly what it says, people call me an Islamophobe. I read Surah 5, verse 51, which commands Muslims not to be friends with Jews and Christians. I quote the verse to people, all the middle stuff happens, long story short, people call me an Islamophobe. This cycle of reading Context defense, more reading, David Wood's a racist, sometimes follows a modified pattern because quite frequently I'm the one who cries context. For example, everyone up to and including the President of the United States tells me that according to the Quran, if anyone kills a man, it's as if he's killed all mankind. What a wonderful teaching. Surely I want to read such a wonderful teaching for myself instead of mindlessly believing whatever CNN tells me to believe. So I use the skills I learned on Sesame Street to read the verse. Surah 5, verse 32, which turns out to be a quotation from the Jewish Talmud and which specifically says that this was a teaching for the children of Israel. At this point, I cry context and I invite my Muslim friends to read the very next verse, which is for Muslims, not for the children of Israel, and which commands Muslims to kill and mutilate all kinds of people. Muslims cry context for this verse and tell me that it can't possibly mean what it says because it's so horrifically violent. I go to their sources and show them the context. Surprise, surprise, someone ends up calling me an Islamophobe. My ability to read is getting me into lots of trouble. That's why, in order to prevent future generations from being labeled racists and bigots, we need to launch a war on literacy. That sounds extreme, but if we don't eliminate reading, people like me will continue to open books and figure out that there's a massive campaign of deception meant to keep us quiet while jihadists subjugate unbelievers in the name of Allah. So, hooked on phonics will now be hooked on phobics, Islamophobics. Reading rainbow will be racist rainbow. Pinky dinky do will be pinky dinky don't. Super why will be super won't. Word girl is the worst girl and the entire electric company should get the chair. It's kind of impressive or oppressive that an ideology violently thrust upon Arabia by an illiterate caravan trader should now compel the rest of us to give up reading, or at least to keep our mouths shut about what we read, like good dimmies. The message of Islam is, and always has been, come back to the 7th century. Allah will only be pleased with you if you live and think and walk and talk and dress like a 7th century Arab. As Churchill said, no stronger retrograde force exists in the world. So, put down those books, put on those kufis and burqas, and let's party like it's 629. Anything else would be civilized, and Allah will have none of that.